Brian, can we start with some initial thoughts about the game? Yeah, um, you know, it sucks, right? Like, it, losing always sucks. Um, but there was just, we played really well in some areas. We played, you know, really poorly, specifically first quarter. Um, kind of let them get back in the fourth quarter as well. Um, you know, they're a talented team. They got talented players. I played with and against those guys for a while, um, you know, specifically with Notre Dame. And it doesn't feel good, but, um, you know, it's just kind of one of those things, ups and downs, we'll, we'll get through it and we'll bounce back next weekend. But, yeah, I mean, losing blows. We'll open for questions. Brian, a couple of your goals, you got probably closer uh, than, you, than you typically get on your shot. What were you seeing from the defense from your matchup, um, seeing no slide out there? Yeah, I mean, they were just, you know, short sticking me and um, not really sliding, which, you know, I kind of took as an insult. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just a matter of dodging and then a quick hesitation to see the slide run away. And, you know, I played against, like I said, against and with those guys. I know a lot of their defense, you know, a lot of their tendencies, everything like that. And right as they ran away, you know, I, I figured I could get underneath. Um, and then, you know, once you get underneath, the outside starts to open up a little bit. So it's just about kind of changing it up. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, some of my outside ones didn't fall today. But, um, you know, it kind of it, it ebbs and flows. Brian, DJ here from Outside the Box podcast. Uh, Craig Chick was amazing on the wing and on the defensive side uh, today. What did you see from him? And uh, just talk a little bit about having Craig on the team and what it's like and uh, what energy he brings to the field. Yeah, uh, Craig Chick's the, you know, in, incredible player. Like, one of the better polls I've ever pl had the pleasure of playing with, um, especially because, you know, he he's so good at taking the ball away. He's so good at defense. You can never really beat him. He's the toughest cover that I ever have to go against in practice. And it's, it makes me better every day. Um, but, you know, even doing stuff like the backhanded goal he had today, he didn't even, he lost all of his luggage. He was playing with new cleats, new stick, new everything. Um, and he still is that much of a beast. So that should tell you kind of how much, um, how talented he is and how much he, you know, he cares and wants to win every time. Hey, this is uh, Tommy Birch with New Sports. And, you know, Craig had a uh, great game, but I also wanted to talk about uh, Jack and Gold today. 16 saves, 55%. You know, he played it out to the end, and I wanted to know uh, what it's like to have somebody like that leading the defense. You know, uh, especially in goalie, it, it's huge, right? Um, having having someone that you can trust to save the shots that you should save and then also have the confidence to know that he's going to steal two, three, four that should be goals every game is absolutely awesome you know um as an offensive player we we don't take those for granted we sit there and we're like you know that should have been in the score could have been 24 to 15 or whatever um and jack kind of kept this in so you know having the having him back up our defense um and being in cage is is great and you know obviously we have a few pieces and we didn't help him sometimes on the defensive end and he was getting some shots that maybe um we could have prevented but you know I know that, and me and everyone on the team has full confidence that, you know, even if he has bad quarter, bad half, bad game, that he'll always bounce back and, you know, play better in the next one. We'll take one more question for Brian. Brian, next week, Archers in Dallas. What are the keys to that matchup? It's going back to, you know, playing our game, right? Um, we, we, we played okay today. Um, offensively, I think that we could have done a lot of things better. We had, you know, first quarter having – one goal is is pretty bad on our end um and we definitely take full responsibility of that but in dallas just getting back to playing our game middle of the field you know owning the, that those um you know matchups owning ground balls and the hustle plays and doing the things that we can control to win that game um and then obviously you know keying into some of their better players um you know schreiber is amazing we got you know holman manny if grant plays i don't know but um yeah just you know Focusing on ourselves mainly and, you know, coming back this week and kind of hitting the ground running. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. All right, guys, we have Tucker Durkin, defenseman for the Atlas. Um, we're going to start with the opening statement. Tucker, can we get some initial thoughts about the game? Yeah. Um, we didn't start the game well, and we didn't finish the game well. I thought our first and fourth quarters um, – we just didn't play well, didn't execute, uh, gave up way too many goals defensively, 
and it's tough to start a game really poorly and finish a game really poorly in the first and fourth quarter and expect to win. We'll open up for questions. Yeah, Tucker, what, from that Red Wings offense, what did you see out there? Did you get the sense, too, that um, just like offensively, defensively as a team, they were playing like a, like a team with, um, with their backs against the wall season on the line? Yeah, I mean, they, they played well. They came out flying. Um, they made a ton of uh, really good individual effort plays. And, um, you know, their top players performed when they needed to. Um, but, yeah, they definitely played with a different pace um, than the first time we saw them. Hey, Tucker, Kyle Bennett from the Outside the Box podcast. Obviously, with Trevor out today, you guys knew you were going to be going in. A little bit disadvantaged with somebody who hasn't, you know, taken consistent face off this year, going and getting guys possession. What was kind of the message going into the game? And then at halftime, when you saw how things were flowing with you guys, you know, going on that 9 1 run to, you know, kind of stay consistent with possessions and, and try to, you know, manage everything going on at the strike with you guys probably having to step up a little bit more defensively uh, with Trevor out. Yeah, I mean, first off, I thought Fob did an awesome job uh, to come in. Um, you know, the sixth game in the season, not having played, not having taken um, a live regular season face-off rep and to come in and battle. Um, you know, I'm super proud of him. I know our entire locker room is super proud of him. I thought he battled for four quarters. Um, and yeah, anytime you lose, you know, a player like Trevor, who's who's the best in the world at, at what he does, the rest of the group um, knows that, you know, there's slack that needs to be picked up. Um, when he's out and I felt like we did that for half the game and we didn't do that for half the game. Um, and you have to do it for four quarters um, or at least three, <laughs> but we did it for two. Um, and the message coming out of the locker room at halftime was, you know, the beginning part of that third quarter uh, was going to be super important to try to extend the lead and try to, you know, kind of um, – you know, build on, build on what we did in the first half, and we did, but we just really, you know, did not have a good fourth quarter, and that was the difference. One of the plays in that fourth quarter that that felt like the pivotal moment was that run out down in the corner between Rob Pinnell and Jack and Kane. And can you walk through like that run out and then the the ensuing possession, waiting for Jack to get back? Yeah, I mean, it was a great effort play by Jack. Um, to see on film, I'm, I'm sure it was close. Um, and his momentum carried him, I believe, over the boards, uh, or it did go over the boards. I saw him dive over the boards. Um, and it was their ball, so we knew we were gonna be without a goalie. I think Rex hopped in there. Um, they moved it quickly to Cav. I tried to get on his gloves, then they moved it to Miles, and Danny Logan actually did a really impressive Impressive job there for a three, four second stretch, just staying in front of him. Um, and Miles made a great play. He, you know, shot it from 16, 17 yards high to high and, uh, you know, buried it. Take one more question for Tucker. Good. Yeah. Hey, uh, DJ Thieves here from Outside the Box podcast. You guys got off to a slow start down 5 1. What were the words at the end of that first quarter going into the second? And then um, once you guys started to get on a roll, what was it that kept you guys going on the defensive end? Because they were getting amazing shots off in the second, but you guys were also making very good plays and causing turnovers and then giving Jack a good opportunity to see the ball and make saves. Yeah, um, I think which was what was nice is we went down. It wasn't nice going down 5-1, but there wasn't a level of – panic on the sideline or on the field. Um, it was a lot calmer um, than the last time a team went on a run like that versus us. And I think it was the Whip Snakes in Long Island. Went on a big run in the second half. Um, and I felt like in that game earlier in the season, there was a little bit of panic. Um, but today I was proud to, you know, to see us as a team kind of you put our heads down and, and just refocus. And I think that was a big, big part of us getting back in the game. Um, in the second quarter, uh, they did get a lot of good looks. Jack played great. 
he always put he you know like he always does um i just think you know we locked in a little bit more defensively um but i mean you're just not going to win that many games giving up 16 goals and you know you're just not you're not going to win that many games so defensively it wasn't good enough all right guys we have eddie glazner defensive for the redwoods eddie can we get some initial thoughts about the game yeah, you know, I think, uh, look, it, 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 it's very difficult to get wins in this league no matter what. And I think that it was pretty ugly on the defensive end. We gave up a ton of goals. We gave up a lot of scrappy ground balls we should have had that they came up with and scored on. But at the end of the day, no matter what the circumstances were, you have to be extremely excited about coming out with a W because nothing comes easy in this league, as we've learned, right? We dropped, you know, we came into the game one and four. Very easily could have been, uh, what, three and two, right? And just sitting in a completely different spot. We dropped a one goal game to the Archers and the Whipsnakes. So coming out with a one goal win against these guys uh, feels really good. You know, on the other on the other side, just I guess looking at the glass half empty, we, we have to understand that we're not gonna get away with that all season and we need to tighten stuff up. We have to win 50-50 ground balls. Um, you know, look, they were dealing with, they had a rookie faceoff guy and Trevor wasn't playing say what you want to say about the outcome of the game. That was a gritty, scrapped out W by us being down by, I don't know, four or five goals, whatever it was. So have to be proud, have to hang your hat on it, but we got a quick turnaround here this week. We'll open up for questions. Eddie, we've talked before about uh, like the plays that Jack Near makes that just spark uh, the energy in this team. You guys came up to a hot start first quarter, they answered in the second quarter. What were some of those plays in the third or early fourth quarter that uh, got the juice up and, and led to the win? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, you know, we do a player of the game, uh, warden of the woods reward ceremony after games, after wins, and, and it went to Charlie Bertrand. I feel like Bertrand was a rookie last year. He played very well, but, but kind of needed to break out and start making some plays on his own. And he really demanded the ball, started going to the cage, got us goals when we needed them, and that was a huge performance. And when you have guys like that, really step up. It then starts making the job of guys like Cav, Pinnell, uh, Jules, Miles, Surge, like so much easier because you have just more guys making plays. So I felt like everyone seeing Bertrand kind of take things over and get beat his guys and take them to the rack gave everyone a ton of confidence. And then on our end, Jack Kelly was lights out. He made a ton of saves. We didn't give him very good shots and, and he made the most of it. Um, you know, there were some opportunities in the second quarter, like you said, where he let them go on a run and he was seeing five yard shots. Uh, but he came up with some sick saves. Um, so hats off to Jack Kelly for holding us down on the defensive end. Eddie, DJ here with Outside the Box Podcast. Um, first off, the defense seemed to, I got some questions for you. The defense seemed like it had a little bit of a uh, trouble communicating today. And then there was a huge lapse on second slides being there after the first slide went. How do you guys address that? And then secondly, how does it feel to score your first goal? And like, what, what were your thoughts after that absolute late? Firstly, I think you look at the structure of the Atlas offense, it's very active off ball. And the way that we decided to go with matchups, you know, we, we put Apple on Teat, um, we put myself on Chris Gray and Arden on Eric Law. And I, I would say that, um, you know, Teat is kind of a ball dominant player, but Chris Gray and Eric Law do an awesome job of keeping you occupied. It's very difficult to stay inside and communicate when you have those guys trying to play pipe to pipe getting, you know, trying to get you caught in between. There were a couple moments where T was skipping the ball through the entire defense to Chris Gray because, you know, I or someone else was trying to help inside a ton. Um, so if anything, you know, maybe a, a learning experience or opportunity for other guys to kind of uh, get themselves into a position where they can be more communicative because, you know, you play some of these guys that, that try to essentially just take you out of the defense. So uh, everyone has to be speaking. Everyone has to be loud. And to Keegan's point, uh, you know, no Jack near hurts. He, he's a high energy communicator and great player. But, you know, we have to make the most without him. Um, as far as the goal is concerned, uh, you know, you always remember your first two. Uh, it could be my last. We'll see. Um, so just close your eyes and rip it. Uh, I was, uh, but I was excited to shoot that and, and, and very happy that that went in. Um, I made some mistakes this game for sure that, that I, I am not sulking on, but wish I could have had back, especially there was one where I just kind of stood still and Chris Gray just cut right off the back of my head. Uncharacteristic of me. Um, I was asleep at the wheel. 
So I was really glad to, to have gotten that and just have to show the offense, you know, I, I'm going to get one back for you guys. We'll take one more question for Eddie. Hey, Eddie, this is uh, Tommy Birch with Nuke Sports. And I wanted to talk about you guys were a lot better in transition today than you guys have been in past weeks. You know, got a couple good goals and with yours in transition. And how to feel to be able to ex execute the uh, clear there. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that's right, Tommy. All, all, all week, for the past two weeks, we're doing Zoom calls, everything. We're like, we got to be up and out. We got to be playing in transition. Look, make smart plays. Don't do anything stupid. Don't take stupid shots. Don't try to make more happen that's not there. But we got to start finding sparks uh, and, and fly up and down the field, right? Give people confidence. It's like those plays, and you see it for them. Like, Cade Van Rapport hits a two. They're all jacked up. They get the ball again. They're playing with a ton of confidence. Like, we have to be able to push transition and get up and out. And it starts with getting stops. Um, but really, like, we just have to be aggressive and get down the field. And, and Nat made a great point of that for the past two weeks. Jack Kelly was like, I need you guys getting up field. I'm going to throw you guys outlets. So we were like, all right, we get stops. Everybody out. First three guys up the field, you're going. And it paid off. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys, we have Rob Pinnell, um, attackman for the Redwoods. We're going to start with some initial thoughts. Rob, what are some uh, initial <laughs> thoughts about the game? Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a game of runs. Uh, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on this game. Three weeks to this build up to this. A lot of conversations amongst guys in the team with coach. Guys have a lot of thoughts, and at the end of the day, you got to go out and execute. And uh, we executed our, our game plan in the first quarter almost to perfection. Uh, and then it got away from us a little bit, but got quiet at halftime. And uh, just so proud of the way we stayed in there and, and battled and, and and didn't quit. You know, we could have easily kind of <laughs> felt, you know, handed it over there when we lost that lead. And uh, we knew we know it's at stake. Every game's a playoff game for, for us from here on out. And uh, to just come back and, and just keep fighting and, you know, jack and goal, TD at the faceoff X. And just to, so proud of the guys. I mean, we... we we needed this win, and, uh, and we earned it, uh, and excited to uh, enjoy it for a few hours and, and get focused on next week. We'll open up for questions. Yeah, Rob, that fourth quarter uh, run out down in that corner there that led to the game winner, can you walk us through that? Uh, yeah, just uh, flashback to my Cornell days, and, uh, and that's just what we were taught to do, uh, you know, run out the balls and, and dive, and, and, you know, we call those... Uh, George Boyardi plays, and uh, I just was, I saw Jack running after it. I was like, I better get on my horse here and dove, and uh, honestly, I don't know, uh, I don't know how Miles put that shot in, but uh, it, it paid off, and you know, I was just doing my job. You know, that's the, my, I'm attacking and my job is the back with the ball, doing my job, and uh, I'm glad it, it, it worked out the way it did, the, the two-pointer at a, at a great time. You mentioned some of the things that you guys were talking about that you executed in the first quarter. What specifically were those things that you talked about during that three-week uh, period? I don't want to tell you that because then teams are going to know moving forward. No, we, you know, we, we're the, probably the worst team in transition in the PLL, and we wanted to try and get some early offense, some early opportunities, and, um, and we did that. You know, Matt Cavanaugh had some great takes, um, Robert Garnsey. So we were focused on just pushing it early in, in our offensive possessions, but smart. And, and we did that, and not that we got away from it. Um, I just think we started letting it up on the other end. They were doing a good job, and listen, Atlas is a, one of the best teams in the league for a reason, and we know they weren't gonna go away, and they battled from behind all, all year long, and, and they could score in bunches. Uh, you know, I was proud of our defense, six on six. We just gotta clean up the middle of the field, and, and the last five seconds of possessions is, uh, <laughs> it seems to be a, uh, one of our Achilles heels, so we'll work on that going forward. But. Uh, you know, we, we six on six defensively, we were so focused on, we did a great job there. Transition offense, which we, we did a great job. I mean, Glazner, two-pointer, we haven't had many two-pointers, um, let alone transition two-pointers. So, uh, you know, that was some of our focuses coming in and, and we did a good job of executing. Rob, DJ here from Outside the Box Podcast. Um, in that second quarter, you guys almost went scoreless. It didn't go scoreless. Um, and Atlas took a huge run. Second quarters have been a problem throughout this uh, season for you guys. How do you guys begin to address the second quarter and um, put a four, full four quarters together so that you don't run into some of these closer games? Because I've noticed 
first, third, and fourths are really good for you guys and you do well, but the second quarter is what gets teams back in. So what is a way you guys can get to win four full quarters? Yeah, that's good to know. You know, when you're one and four, most most quarters don't go well for you. Uh, so, um, you know, yeah, it's a good point. I think it's, you know, listen, they started winning some face-offs. They did a good job of scoring. And, I mean, TD was great all game long. He's going to lose some, right, just the, the way the game goes. I think that guy, their guy won a majority in the second quarter, which gave them the ball. Um, and I think we were getting some good looks. You know, I didn't shoot well, um, but I, I was just missing the goal. I thought I was getting some good looks, and uh, and a lot of guys were getting good looks. So I, I don't think I think it was just uh, maybe shot selection, putting the ball to better spots. Um, but yeah, that's a, that, that's a, that's a great point, and, and you know, hopefully that'll be a point of emphasis for us moving forward. Is you know, you get out to a good start, you got to maintain it. You can uh, makes it would make the game a lot easier for us if we could have played the second quarter like we did in the first quarter. Cool. Cool. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. We have Ben Rubior, head coach of the Atlas. Coach, you had some head, some initial thoughts about the game. Yeah, credit to the Redwoods. I thought they played really, really well. Um, they came out with a lot of energy. Obviously, went up big on us in the first quarter. So they started the game well, and then they finished the game well. Um, I think that you know it's something that sticks out to me. <coughs> Excuse me. Definitely should have called a timeout when Jack was uh, was out of bounds. Just um, just didn't didn't yell it or make the decision definitively enough, and I think it it cost our guys. So I'll take that. Um, but long season, we knew that was a good team. Obviously, they were they were playing extremely hard and extremely well, and uh, and I think we got to move on quickly to the next one because uh, we're going to be playing a very good Archers team. A little bit for questions. Coach, uh, Jake Fott filling in at the face-off stride for Trevor Baptiste. What did you think of his performance, and what, what does the timetable look like for Trevor's return? Yeah, so Jake, I thought, did a fantastic job. I, I thought as the game went on, I thought his timing of those whistles, which is a, a challenge, especially after taking a month and a half off, um, I thought he did a great job, and what a competitor, and... You know, I, I think that that kid's only going to get better. So we feel we feel confident in him. I feel like it's great that we have two options. Um, and I think that gives us a little bit of freedom in terms of the Trevor decision. That said, Trevor's well ahead of schedule. Um, and, you know, the, the word that I'm getting is he could have played this week. Um, but I think they wanted to – I think they wanted to be conservative um, – to try and get him as, as healthy as possible. But he has, um, he sends me a video each and every day of him working out, uh, doing some things that I couldn't do. So I think he's healing up well, and I, I expect him to be back here sooner rather than later. Hey, Coach, this is Kyle Bennett from the Outside the Box podcast. Uh, over the past two game weeks for you guys going back to Minnesota, and then this week, it seems like Dave Van Radford has kind of been unlocked a little bit on the offense, you know, being able to give you guys some range from that two-point arc, can you just talk about, you know, the dimension he kind of brings coming up from the defense to be able to score the way he does uh, with the two bombs? Yeah, I, I thought it was a, a huge goal that he scored. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking that we haven't gotten him involved more, but um, we've we've talked about a few kind of simple schematic things as, as we've frankly watched some other teams play and how they get some guys open to uh, to take those kind of shots. So anyway, he's done a great job. Uh, really proud of him. I think we have, you know, Chick had a big goal for us. Um, Got to figure out a way to get Kobe um, to take some shots too, because I'm pretty sure he's shooting 100 percent right now. So um, we'd we'd love to we'd love to see him let the ball ball go as well. The two pointer is such a weapon. Uh, we were on the losing end of it today. They scored three two pointers, including two in the fourth quarter, which. Um, you know, it's just tough to win games that way, and uh, credit to them. I thought Eddie Glazner's shot was awesome. I thought Miles' shot was really heads up into a great spot. So, um, anyway, it's it's a it's a momentum changer. It's a game changer, and it's one that you got to try and win that battle uh, throughout a game. Coach DJ here from Outside the Box Podcast. You brought up the two point battle that you guys lost today. But you guys also lost the face off battle. Um, how do you guys clean up the middle of the field uh, while Trevor's out in this absence just to keep you guys uh, in a position where you continue to roll the wins? Um, in all honesty, you know, you guys cleaned up the middle of the field today. You probably win by four or five. 
And um, you're looking at, you know, a five and one season and, and looking, you know, to continue to roll next week in the archers. Now you're kind of going back to the drawing board. So how do you fix up the middle of the field to continue to roll? I think, you know, two things that stick out in my head. We had two failed clears in the fourth quarter, which are just deadly, especially when you're not, you know, when you're below 50% facing off, if you're if you're not clearing well, that's a that's a real problem. So I think that we got to do a better job there. Um, and then I I think that I think that look, we we work on it every week. I think I think transition going both O to D and D to O is extremely important. So we got to continue to put an emphasis on that. Thought we did a great job of getting back in the hole. Um, thought a couple times we got caught up a little high with our middies and their attack been dodged. Other times, we kind of went with their cutters and we allowed some, some trailers to be open. So those are, those are not complicated fixes, but important fixes, and we got to make sure we do a better job of that. That said, I, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our guys. I thought they, thought they competed. I thought they battled. I thought they gave themselves a chance to win. And I, uh, I take a good amount of that blame that we didn't come out of there with a win. Um, also, also credit to our opponent. But... Um, but this is an opportunity, if we use it in the right way, for us to be a better team coming out of this. I, I mean, I think we leaned on Trevor a little bit too much early. And I would like us to, you know, be able to win games no matter kind of how the faceoff X is going. And I thought we took a step in the right direction there. We just got to do a better job of finishing, whether it's finishing plays or finishing the game. And I think if we do, um, you know, I think we can keep this thing moving forward and still working towards our goal. Take one more question for Coach. Thank you, guys. Thanks, man. All right, guys, we have Nat St. Laurent, head coach of the Redwoods. Coach, can we get some initial thoughts about the game? Uh, you know, just proud of our guys. You know, it, we've been waiting to come back. We needed a win like that, but it was, uh, it was kind of a fun game to be a part of. You know, there's some sequences there where – you know, the first five minutes, and we've done that before in a game where we did everything right. We slowed, we, we wanted to push in transition. We were going a little bit faster than we normal, and I think we caught the Atlas off guard because that was a point of emphasis. And our spacing was great, and then all of a sudden they start clawing back, and uh, it just seemed like it was a fun game to be a part of, and it's good to be on the winning side of it. Our guys needed it. Awesome. We'll open up for questions. Hey, uh, you yep. mentioned that there were some back and forth sequences. If you could pinpoint like one turning point in the second half there, what, what play do you think really uh, moved the momentum of the game? Well, I think that two-pointer while we were man up on Perkovic is one with all the other plays that happened, I think one that might be forgotten. Um, you could tell in that sequence, Miles wanted to pull the trigger because we had talked going all the way back to the bubble against this team. He scores some twos from that angle. And that was something we planned for, but uh, he made that extra pass and they, we were really excited. I think I think that was the one that, because we didn't start great, and I think we got down four, and uh, you know they scored their ninth out of ninth goal or whatever, and it was it was tough. Great, this is <laughs> yeah. Keep going. I'll talk with you all day, all right. Keeks. Uh, uh, you mentioned that the spacing was better this week yeah. offensively. Like, what were the points of emphasis between uh, Minnesota and now? Yeah, so we uh, we went back to our two-two, um, and we kind of moved some guys around a little bit, and we changed a rotation or two, which is actually going to start putting Jules in a slot, and he's pretty effective from there. And his guy has to be the hot, hot guy, so we felt like that would put a lot of pressure on the defense. And then our middies are just, you know, are phenomenal. I think, you know, Charlie Bertrand's great. Perkovic, you know, they did a really nice job. But the attack, we're doing a better job of moving the ball. Uh, Kavanaugh was playing a little stress-free, which was great. I was so happy to see him get a goal and run by some people. He needed that. We needed that. And, um, you know, I think that was the big spacing thing. We spent a lot of time on it. Um, you know, going all the way back to, you know, elementary level, just skeleton offense with our practice, going through it monotonously and they did a great job they were really dialed in so all the credits to our guys I'll take one more question hey coach, coach. Oh, sorry hey coach this is uh, Tommy with Nuke Sports and I just wanted to talk about you know Jack H Kelly had a great game today you know getting some consistency in goal and having the defense fight around him what was that like 
Felt good. <laughs> it felt good. You know, he's. I was happy for Jack. Uh, really scared in that first quarter. I think uh, when we gave up a goal, it, I, I think feel like I've seen that before, and was really nervous. But uh, the other thing that we wanted to, and I don't know what the numbers look like, but uh, I felt like we were way faster, and we emphasized getting us up and out. And he missed a couple high, uh, but that's what we want. He he does a great job getting the ball on his stick and getting out, and uh, that's what we wanted to do. And I think that was a real quiet game changer for us today. Next week, uh, chaos. What are the keys to that matchup? You know, it's it's us in the chaos, so it'll probably be a one goal game. Um, you know, we've got to be prepared. Coach, their coaching staff do a great job. You know, putting shorties on our attack men and trying to make us attack different ways. We know each other pretty well. I feel like. Other than the whip snakes, I think we've played the chaos probably the most over the years. I don't know that stat. Uh, you're the you're the numbers genius. Um, so I think the key is going to be you know defensively we really got to be physical and smart on those picks. You know we can't let them get sit there with their hands free and get to the middle of the field. And then uh, offensively again with them it's spacing and you know making sure we're taking high quality shots and can't let you know Blaze Reardon get hot. So I feel good about that, and um, you know, I'm excited that TD's kind of going a little bit. He was pretty, pretty sick towards the end of the game, but uh, we'll be excited to get him healthy, and you know, he's coming along. Jack's playing well in goal. should be a fun one. I KB has one right here. Oh, cool. Hey, Coach, it's KB. KB, uh, my guy, you know, how are you? It's the press conference after a win, so you know I got to start it off with how we're feeling. Yeah, um, well, you know how I'm feeling. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Uh, you brought up Charlie Bertrand, though, and I feel like this season he's really started to come out of his shell and really blocking this midfield alongside Kirk and Miles. Can you just talk about, like, the, the dynamic he adds to this midfield and the way that you guys are using him, how explosive he's been for this offense and what he's been able to contribute? The, the first thing I want to say about Charlie Bertrand, if you haven't had a chance to talk to him, he is the most humble, awesome guy in the world, you know. Um, you know, I was happy for him. You know, he can go off ball. I mean, several times Rob Pinnell has talked to me about how great he loves having him on the field because he's a very good off ball cutting midi. Um, he made some great plays here going all the way back to, you know, USA tryouts. He made some phenomenal catches and finishes, and he's been doing it for us all year. And now we're starting to give the ball on a stick. So once that midfield gets going and we start getting that cohesiveness, not, you know, with, between Jules and Charlie and Miles and Perk, it's a tough, tough group to match up with. And Charlie's very important in that. Thanks, Coach. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. I don't know how much left I, I, I got before I knock this thing. <laughs> I don't know how Tucker Dirk is big ass going to fit in there. Yeah, we'll figure that out. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Uh, did we look a little faster or no? All right, guys. We have Joe Nardella, face-off man for the Whip Snakes. Joe, can you get some initial thoughts about the game? Yeah, Coach Stag's really challenged us all week. You know, we haven't played a complete four quarters yet, and I think tonight was probably our most complete performance against a really good Chaos team, so credit to our entire lineup. I think everybody answered the bell and uh, stepped up to the challenge. A little bit for questions. Yeah, Joe, you guys created a ton of offense, uh, especially off the stripe. What was working out there against Chaos? Um, I think when I switched to standing up, we were getting the ball out a little bit quicker, and they tend to, you know, really go hard after ground balls. So we got a couple six on fives. We made some good reads. Credit to them. They held a lot on their slides, and we didn't stick a lot of our shots until Ty Warner got that one, and then I got the one late. But uh, Blaze is a great goalie. He's hard to beat, and they were trusting him to, to see and face shots, and he did a good job stopping a lot of them. But we did uh, happen to get a couple on the board. Hey, Joe. It's Kyle Bennett. Uh Obviously, Mike Gerhardt out tonight. What adjustments, if any, did you guys have to make, you know, going into this game? Obviously, James Barclay was picked up uh, to kind of fill his role. Uh, what was that like, you know, just having Mike kind of on the sideline and more of a, a coaching role than being out with injury? Yeah, I think – I think Colin Squires has really been coming into his own. I mean, he's a great understudy, a guy who can play both down low and up top. He's learned a ton from Mike, both you know throughout training camp and practice on the film calls every week. And then James Barkley is a, a member of our first championship team, so he's very very familiar with a lot of the guys playing defense. I'm very familiar with him. He was playing short stick D midi that first season, so he was on the wings a lot. And you know, I played against him in indoor as well. And I know he's a tough, hard nosed player, so I think he was the perfect guy to fit right into the lineup tonight. He did a great job battling you know Connor Kirst has really stepped up a lot lately and Ty Warner is awesome on the wings as well so having you know those four guys just they, that really made all the difference out there tonight. Joe DJ with Outside the Box podcast uh, you had a goal and an assist today um, one of them was off of the face off right away talk to us about you know that transition game for you guys especially right off of the face off 
and not only just, you know, how it worked for you guys today, but just how it works for you guys in general as a team. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of teams don't stress the importance of cashing in on some of their transition opportunities early in the season. You know, me personally, I had a lot of turnovers off the dot and credit to our coaching staff for continuing to trust me to make decisions. That's something me and uh, Coach Grady have been working on a lot in practice, keeping the stick in front of my face, making good reads. I've been watching a ton of film um, to clean up those mistakes. And I think we've just done a really good job with our spacing and, you know, keeping Matt and Zed wide on those wings and teams forced to respect them has opened up the middle a lot. And you saw Ty get his goal because of that and me get mine late in the game because of that. We'll take one more question for Joe. Yeah, Joe, next week, uh, Chrome, Connor Farrell, what are the keys to that matchup? You know, Connor's really good. I've, luckily, I got a pretty good look at him in the All-Star game. Um, I think him and I have very different styles, but um, I think there's a lot of things he does well that I do or that I can kind of counter. And I think he's going to be a really tough matchup. Their entire team's really good. Their rope unit and wing guys are really good. So it's going to be a really good challenge, but I'm definitely not going to forget that he tried to take my head off in that All-Star game. Thank you. All right, guys, we have Blaze Reardon, goalie for the chaos. Uh, Blaze, can you get some initial thoughts about the game? Yeah, uh, that was an important game for us. Uh, we came out of the gates and uh, started off slow, and they're a great team, and they got off to a 5-1 lead. And, you know, after that lead, um, it was back and forth, you know. So uh, to think that the first six minutes of the game, you know, kind of lost us that you know, lost us the game at the end. Uh, definitely stings a little bit when we know our back's against the wall and uh, the season's diminishing by the moment and uh, we don't have any moments to sit back and give up 5-1 uh, leads. So, uh, you know, it, it stings, but got to flush it and move on. We'll open up for questions. Yeah, Blaze, after that 5-1 first quarter, and the first game today we saw 5-1 first quarter and flipped to 11-5 and Usually in lacrosse, you know, it's such a game of runs. What is it about this Wave Snakes team that just makes it so difficult, even though you guys went goal for goal with them after that first quarter, difficult to answer with like a 5-1 run of your own? Yeah, they've been there. Um, you know, they've won two championships in this league and lost the third. So they've kind of seen it all. And um, they're not going to, you know, they're a team that uh, you rarely, you know, capitalize on mental errors. Um, you have to beat them with hard work you have to beat them on the hustle plays and um, when you get behind and they can settle in and you know kind of run their system on offense and wear down shot clocks and you know play smart defense and not give up transition and you know make those mental errors that we usually capitalize on uh, you know there's only 48 minutes and uh, sometimes your time runs out and I think there's 1.7 seconds and you know we get a shot and you know another 30 seconds and who knows, you know, but it's 48 minute game and can't start off 5-1, six minutes in. Hey boy, Kyle Bennett. Um, you know, you talk about time's kind of, you know, flipping away a little bit. You guys got to be on your P's and Q's going into this West Coast swing. What do you guys feel like you really have to hone in on, you know, going into this West Coast trip for the remainder of the season? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I I'm, sitting here ticked off because I know this is a resilient group and when you have resiliency and the toughness that we have in our locker room you know it's it it doesn't make sense when when it doesn't go your way and you know we weren't expecting to be in this position and we're here now and um you know we have you know it starts it starts with me I'm a captain of this team I'm the last line of defense I'm expected to play great and uh, I haven't done that and um, you know, it usually flows out from there. So our offense put in 12 goals. We TK did a great job at the X, and you know I need to be better. And um, you know we're we're gonna have a little more fun. Um, I think we got away from kind of having the swagger that we've had. Uh, everyone's gripping their sticks. There's a lot of pressure on the line. You know, you look at yourself and you're at the bottom of bottom of the league, and you know it. You you feel it a little bit, but that's not who we are. Um, we're a fun group that plays hard. That you know, enjoys confrontation, and uh, we need to just focus on that and kind of let the rest fizzle itself out. I'll take one more question for Blaze. Good. Good. Thanks, Blaze. Blaze, <clears throat> DJ from Outside the Box Podcast. Uh, Brent Kennedy had a pretty good game. Uh, today, talk to me about how he settled into his rookie year and uh, what it's just been like having him on the defense, mixing in and, and taking Johnny's spot. Yeah, um, 
you know, I think BK's done great. Uh, he showed up to training camp. He communicated. He, you could tell that he mentally and physically can play at the highest level. But, um, you know, with that being said, he's our, fir he's our first round draft choice. And uh, we're more than halfway through the season. So there, there's no rookie. There's no backups. There's no fill-ins. It's you're, you're part of this organization and we expect you to come out and play. This is a championship pedigree team and you get plugged in that lineup and that's what we expect. So, um, you know, I put pressure on him and, you know, I thought he did a great job getting the ball off the carpet today. Um, I think he has a nice calming presence. He never gets in front and ahead of himself, but uh, that's what he that's what he's expected to do uh, week in and week out. And, uh, you know, I, I expect to see that uh, through the remainder of the season. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Yeah. I can do that. Yep. Of me? Yep. That's Just it. That's what they call them selfies, right? Yep. <laughs> there you go. How'd I do? My daughter says <laughs> I take shitty picture. pictures. I don't want to be all stuff. Yeah. Oh, of us? Oh, it's just going to be still just now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Connor. Thank you. Yep. I think. <laughs> Are we, are we rolling? Are good, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we have Jim Stagnita, head coach of the Whip Snakes. Coach, can we get some initial thoughts about the game? Uh, it was a good game, right? They're, they're tough. They're scary. I thought we played well, um, particularly, you know, at both ends of the field. And, um, I mean, they're just, you know, they're so difficult to guard. Um, they can, you know, even when you do play good defense, uh, they find a way to get off shots. Uh, but I thought, you know, I thought across the board we played well on both ends of the field for, you know, for four quarters. Um, you know, a couple times we, uh, you know, we didn't get the one stops. We gave the ball back to them, but they're so opportunistic and they're so good off the ground that, you know, that's going to happen. Um, but, you know, we had a lot of different guys step up and, and, and contribute today. Uh, so, you know, overall, you know, from, you know, all across the field, it was, uh, you know, I think it was probably the most consistent four quarters we've played all year. Over for questions. Yeah, Coach, on attack, Keegan Khan making a second start down there. What, do you, what did you like from his performance? Well, I had to kick him in the ass a little bit as we were going. Uh, you know, I thought he was he was sitting back a little bit. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, right, he scores that big goal, you know, down the stretch. Um, he scored another goal early. Uh, he set a great pick for Rambo on, on another goal. Um, you know, he didn't, they didn't, they weren't able to short stick him. When he did end up with a short stick on him, he flat out beat him. Um, I think we could even get more out of him, uh, but I thought that he really, you know, he really made a big contribution for us today. You mentioned some of the people who stepped up. Uh, one of the guys who was obviously out, Michael Earhart, arguably one, one of the most valuable players on this team for the past few years, uh, who stepped up like between the arcs to uh, to make make up for the impact that he makes when he's on the field? Well, I thought Squires did some really good things today. Um, you know, he, uh, he he played great on the wings. Uh, you know, he played he, he, he played really well in, in the six on six. And, you know, Barks was, was the right place at the right time. Great substitution for Mike this week. If you're going to put anyone in, you want to put someone in who knows how to play against the pick game and play the style. Barks has been with us before. Um, you know, walked right into the locker room and everybody was excited to see him. Um, I don't think, look, we, Mike Earhart's a big part of our, our team, but you know, when, when Barks walks in and, and you know that he's, the guys were confident in, in his ability to, you know, to step up and, and help us, uh, despite the, uh, the two that he took at one point in the game. He, the rest of the game, he did a great job, played great defense, um, picked up some ground balls and uh, communicates really well. Hey coach, Kyle Bennett, can you take us through, uh, you know, what was going through your head on the decision to throw the challenge flag? Uh, you know, the goal ends up getting overturned. I felt like that was a huge momentum swing for you guys at that point in the game. Um, what kind of went into that decision making process for you to throw the flag there? Well, I thought it was one of the few actual breaks we caught, you know, bounces and whatever. Uh, look, we have a, as soon as it happened, I just asked them to check the, uh, the iPad. I mean, we have the iPad right there. I'm, you know, it's not like I'm a genius. I look at the iPad. I think he has his back foot in there, and I tell him that I want them to take a look at it. But you can't, you, you know, you're never sure because our, I don't know how many angles they have. Uh, our angle looked like he dragged his back foot and leg and knee in the crease. Um, you know, as compared to years in the past, having the iPad there is, is really helpful. 
So, uh, yeah, I'd like to say that, you know, I made this great decision at this time that was really important, but I simply looked at the iPad and it looked to me like his foot was in the crease. We'll take one more question, hey coach. coach. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Tommy Birch with Duke Sports. And you guys had a really complete game today, but you guys had a little bit of trouble uh, passing the ball and getting assisted shots. And I was wondering, um, like, if there's something you want to emphasize this week uh, to improve for next game. I'm not sure I understand the, the question. Are you, you saying we had trouble passing the ball today? And, and No, you just had trouble like getting the assisted shots. Well, assisted goals is going to depend on what your opponent does. Um, I thought, you know, Matt Rambo probably could have had three or four more assists today. You know, part of that is just we didn't finish some opportunities. I thought we played, you know, we played pretty good offense and probably had more opportunities tonight to have assisted goals. But again, it you know, assisted goals, you know, while that was something that, you know that I've always looked at when you when we play the the, uh, the chaos we tend not to have many assisted goals because um, we're able to you know we're able to when we're able to be effective against them we tend to be able to switch the matchups and you know really a lot of our goals came from you know individual dodges I, I thought today tonight for the first time all year we won individual dodges be it at the attack or at the midfield including you know Channy Jack of Voice, um, uh, Cole, you know, all those guys won individual matchups. And when you're doing that and, and they're not sliding quickly, you know, you're not necessarily going to score assisted goals. Um, I thought we would have had a nice mix if we had finished a few of the other ones. I really liked the way we moved the ball and played offense tonight. I was, I think it was our best offensive effort by far. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Good? Good. Yeah. Great. See you guys. Do you want one? Yeah, you can take it. All right, guys, we have Ty Warner, midfielder for the Whip Snakes. Ty, can we start with some initial thoughts about the game? Uh, man, it was a good game. It's good to be back after three weeks, honestly. Um, we knew that team was, you know, gunning for us. We, the first time we played them, didn't have all their cats. But, um, you know, it was a good win tonight. I thought the offense played very well. 14 goals. We did just enough on defense. So after three weeks stretch like that where we had off, can't complain with the effort tonight. We'll open up for questions. Yeah, Tyler, a couple of young guys stepping up on that rope unit. Colin Squire stepping up in Big Mike's absence and, and Connor Kirsch getting some run at D-Mid. What have those two brought to this team? Yeah, man, I mean, without Mike, it's always tough. Obviously, he's the best, you know, LSM in the world. But I thought Squire's played great. He was great off the ground tonight, which was huge, honestly. Um, and then freaking uh, Kirsty, he's been huge for us all year. I mean, in transition, I think he got one tonight. He's been playing big, especially with the big bodies. We need him. So, you know, those guys are great tonight. Hey, Tyler, it's Kyle Bennett from the Outside the Box podcast. Coach Stagnita talked about, you know, when James Barclay walked into the room, everybody was ecstatic, you know, him being back on this roster. Can you just take us through from a player perspective what it was like being a Bark walk in, you know, with Mike being out and him being the guy, you know, coming in as his replacement? You know, Barks is huge because he could play pole, he could play shorty. So I asked him, like, if he had his short sticks ready to go because, you know, who knows where, you know, we might need him. But he's, he's always huge. He's always ready to go. Um, you, you know, he had some time off and we were able to snag him, so he filled right in. We didn't really, you know, Mike's great, but we, I don't think we missed the beat, honestly, tonight with Barks and Squires doing their thing. So hats off to him for being ready, being prepared, and stayed in shape, and it was huge for us tonight. You got Chrome next week in Dallas. What are the keys to that matchup? I mean, I haven't had a chance to scout them a lot yet, but obviously, you know, they're are they in first right now? They're probably in first. Um, so it might be a battle for first place next week. Obviously, their offense is clicking. They got some young guys that are doing their thing. So we'll be we'll get into the film a little bit. I know Wisnowski and Nick Turner; those guys are playing great for them. So um, you know, again, once again to the film, have a better idea of what it'll look like. But we know that they're doing they're doing their things this year. So we'll be ready to go. Good, cool. All right, Thanks, appreciate Tyler. you guys. Tyler. All right, guys, we have Graham Matt Tackman for the Archers. Grant, um, Grant, you began some initial thoughts about the game. Yeah, I mean it was uh, definitely a slow first first half. Uh, us getting adjusted, and then um, second half we kind of opened up, won some individual matchups, and um, took advantage of them not sliding to them. So uh, you know, credit Fieldsy, Matt Moore, um, you know th those two in particular, uh, and, and Trey. We're, we're three guys that really got us going, um, and, and then forced them to start sliding, and then and then we were able to kind of get some easier ones. We're open for questions. 
Grant, DJ here from Outside the Box Podcast. Uh, you guys got a lot of transition goals today. You got a couple from Scott Ratliff, uh, one one or two from Trey Leclerc, another from John Robbins. How helpful is it for the offense when those guys are coming in and being uh, productive in transition? And uh, kind of what does it do offensively when those guys are, are a threat? And even, you know, when they're not there, how does it help you guys offensively? Yeah, I, I think those guys, I mean, Coach Bump and Trey to kind of that transition role, um, I'm – I, I, I said it at the end of the game on, on the broadcast, but I've played against Trey for three years. Like him going downhill is a pretty scary thought. Um, and, and then getting him in a two-man game with, with offensive midfielders was, was awesome. JR staying involved in the play on, on, on that one. Um, Rat getting involved. Treasy, you know, just sneaking and, and doing his thing as he usually does. Um, that takes a huge burden off of us just to create six-on-six six opportunities because say what you want about our offense. I mean, every defense in this league is, is really, really good, and it's hard to score six-on-six, six, um, especially with how hard they were riding. Um, you know, if our first few, or our, the first half, we weren't really getting the ball going until like 25 seconds left in the shot clock. So um, we, were, we were kind of struggling in that aspect. But, yeah, getting those guys involved was awesome. And, and, and obviously, J.I. getting involved in the face-off X, you know, seeing him get his groove. Uh, again, a guy that I played against a lot in college um, and, and see his competitive level. You know, that, that was probably the storyteller in the second half. He got in a good mode, and, and guys were scrapping really hard for ground balls. Hey, Grant. Dan from Inside Lacrosse here. You mentioned on the broadcast that you didn't feel like you personally had the best game that you've played in your professional career. What's the recipe to feel differently uh, next week? Uh, 0 for 7 shooting doesn't help, so um, probably – that uh <laughs> i've uh shooting zero percent's never never great um you know I, I had a i had a bunch of assist opportunities so it wasn't all bad but um you know kind of just trying to get back and i knew it wasn't going to be perfect i knew i wasn't going to come out here and have you know four and four um but you know I, I wanted to to perform a little bit better and as i said on the broadcast you know probably one of my worst professional games and we put up 17 so um you know really encouraged by everybody else's ability to step up and make plays you know that's at the, at the end of the day that's what i believe championship teams are made of and uh you know everybody their time comes and you know i'm going to i'm back to work this week watching film getting better and i'll promise you i'll, I'll be better next week we'll take one more question for grant grant Kyle, from the Outside the Box podcast, um, you know, your first time out there in a game scenario with a bunch of new teammates. Just tell me a little bit about playing with some of these new guys on the squad for the first time in a game scenario. Yeah, I, I played with Matty Moore through high school in in, uh, in some club ball, and he's a Philly guy, so, you know, I know Matt well. Um, so adjusting to him. Uh, it, there isn't really much of an adjustment. It's just kind of give him the ball and get out of the way, and he'll do his thing. Um, and he does it better than better than most people in this league. So, uh, especially when he has a short stick on him. So, um, you know, getting him, getting involved with him, but then you know, playing with Jr. Jr. is a spark plug off the faceoff X, and I think he he provides so much, and he's kind of not talked about very much. Um, you know, getting to play, getting to play with him a little bit. Um, and then the other guys, you know, I, I played with uh, for the most part, but still, you know, having Deso in for me, um, you know, the offense has evolved in a different way. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I can best fit without, necessar without uh, necessarily like creating havoc for us. Um, so, you know, I think the ball got sticky a few times in my stick today and we'll, we'll watch film, we'll get better. But all in all, those, those new guys, Coach did a phenomenal do job in drafting, um, you know, not only good lacrosse players, but good teammates and tough competitors. And, and that's um, at the end of the day, like you need a group of guys that are just willing to lay it all out on the line. And you see it with specifically those guys that I talked about um, and, and, you know, Justin and Asio, like those guys will, will put their heart on the line to win. And, and I'm very proud to be, you know, a part of this team. Thanks, good. Thanks, fellas. All right, guys, we have Chris Bates, um, head coach of the Archers. Um, coach, can we get some initial thoughts about the game? Sure. It was hot, <laughs> as everybody knows. But, um, you know, we felt like coming off of, of a three-week break, it was going to take us a little bit to get comfortable. Um, we were sloppy. There was rust on, on a lot of our play early. Um, and then I thought, you know, second half, and, and frankly, I, I, we didn't shoot well the first half. Um, I thought Nick, I thought Morocco played very well. 
you know, you tilt to the second half. I mean, at halftime, we just said, you know, keep the course. So I, I was pleased that we got a, you know, a, a senior group, so to speak, and an upper class group, you know, some vets that just, you know, helped us uh, stay poised. And then uh, winning faceoffs in the second half really helped us. We got some transition, um, you know, but overall for us offensively to, to have an attack score two goals and for us to put up 17 is, is impressive to me. I thought defensively we locked down. Gitz played well in the second half. And then uh, I thought Justin, you know, having the ball that much just makes a difference for us. Like we haven't had, if you look back, I'm not sure, you know, in, in our PLL history if we've won over 70%. So that, that, was, that was obviously, uh, you know, a real plus for us. We're open for questions. Coach Bates, DJ here from Outside the Box Podcast. You got a good uh, game from Justin Asio, kind of his first time to really get going at the X this year, you know, getting settled to the cadence as a rookie. What does this do for his confidence moving forward? And then where is the ceiling for this team if you get that kind of play out of him at the strike consistent? No, I appreciate that. I, I, we thought J.I. played well in the second half last week, um, you know, and all we want to do is, is, is make it a three-man battle, you know, and in this day and age, it's, that's a challenge, frankly, with the skill at, at, at the X. You know, if we can get, you know, upwards of 50% or around that, it just gives us – the margin error in this league is, is, is pretty thin, right? And, you know, as much as, you know, statisticians say that, uh, you know, face-off don't correlate to victory, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it feels like it sometimes. So, you know, ultimately, you know, I think there's a tipping point. So if we can give ourselves the ball that much more, you know, we've been, you know, at the top of the league or near the top of the league, offensive and defensive efficiency. So do the math, right? So – uh, you know, proud of J.I. and the wing, wing guys did a nice job. So, you know, that was a real plus today, and hopefully we can keep that momentum. <laughs> Give you a little shot. Hey, Coach, it's Kyle Bennett. Um, you know, next week you get this, you get a rematch with Atlas next week in Dallas. Um, can you just take me through, you know, the preparation that's going to go into that, obviously a one-goal loss against them earlier this season. Uh, but seeing what this offense can do and, like you said, everything that you guys are able to do with the strike when J.I. is going, uh, what do you expect, you know, going into a rematch for that? Uh, again, you know, one-goal games, you expect one-goal games every, every week. You know, they're, they're a talented team. They're a well-coached team. You know, for us, it, it, if we keep our life simple offensively, you know, different guys can, can produce at any moment. You know, Trey came in and had three goals today and Fields, he had three, like – you know, so if we can continue that, you know, offensively, we've just preached, you know, continuing to share the ball and, and be egoless. Um, you know, I always have great faith in, in Coach Resch and our defensive personnel. Um, so, you know, it's a short week. It's a quick prep, but it's, it's good to just get back in the flow. And we know we've got four more regular season weeks and then into the playoffs. So, you know, we're just taking it, taking it day by day. But, you know, looking forward to, to Dallas. We'll take one more question. That's it. All right, Jeff. Nice Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's a tough one. First half was was really, really good all around. I think defensively, especially, we came out came out flying and really tried to play at the pace we were we were looking for all year. Um, and I think we really dictated the pace defensively and and made some big plays. Um, you know. You know, allowed allowed uh, us to to really push a show. They're not you know getting a lot of inside looks where they have some really crafty guys who can you know skip the ball. Where those are some dangerous shots. So I think we did, did what we needed to do in the first, and then you know uh, played a lot of defense in the second, and things just kind of fell apart a little bit. Um, you know, we just didn't play our game, and I think we just you know have to figure out how to how to play a full game. That's what we've been struggling to do. And, you know, we're going to have to learn fast. Um, you know, the first half and the second half was a, uh, a million times difference. So, you know, we got we to gotta figure out how to, how to grind down and take it one play at a time instead of looking at, you know, how, how to hold on to, you know, a first half lead. You, we got to keep pushing from uh, if we're having success in the first into the second because there's always, always going to be adversity with, you know, any team in this league. So we got we to gotta, we gotta turn it around. Nick, so many new faces on defense uh, this week. What were some of the keys to the game to keep it simple and keep all those new faces on the same page? Yeah, I think it was you know I, uh, you know everyone who, who who played out there today we've we've played with each other at some point. So it was more just you know sticking to the game plan of trying to 
limit, um, you know, their their skip passes and, and letting them get good, clean looks. So it was playing aggressive, hard, getting on hands, and just trying to frustrate them early on. And I think, like I was saying in the first half, I think we did a great job of that. Um, you know, Brody Merrill stepped up big where he, you know, he has those those long, long arms and, and he can frustrate guys, and I think he did that really well. Um, and then it's just, you know, it's just trying to communicate, and I think the communication was lacking a little bit, uh, second half all around. So that's something, you know, starting with me, we got to figure out how to keep the pace going. Obviously, it's a really hot day out there, but, um, you know, we got to pick that up. And But I think overall, I think, you know, I think – the mesh meshing wise, I think we were fine defensively, even with some new guys who weren't in the past few games. Um, you know, everyone steps up, everyone wants to to make plays to to help the team. So it's more of just playing consistent. You know, consistency is key. Consistency is uh, huge in this league. And uh, if you if you let, let down for a few plays, it's going to cost you. We'll take one more question for Nick. All right, guys, we have Sean Cork, head coach of the Cannons. Coach, can we start with some initial thoughts about the game? Um, you know, having some time off in between with the bye and the all-star game, we were really productive. You know, after our last game, guys got back to work individually, had some really good team meetings on philosophy and what we need to do. And, you know, that first half, I thought we grinded. The defense played stellar. You know, holding that team to minimal goals in a first half, they're a powerful offense. Uh, in the second half, you know, we didn't have possession a whole lot. The faceoff X, you know, just that unit wasn't getting 50-50 ground balls to get us possessions. Uh, and defensively, we just broke down a little bit in certain areas. Uh, I thought the guys played hard, though, you know, throughout the game and, We'll get back to work. Coach, you mentioned that face-off stripe. Alex Woodall in the lineup today, Stephen Kelly out. What went into that decision, and what's the, what's the thought process moving forward? Yeah, you know, Inacio and Woodall have a little bit of a history. They competed against each other in college. Uh, Woody has done a nice job against them. So we wanted to give ourselves an opportunity. We knew it was going to be hot out to play an extra offensive guy, two-way guy. Uh, that could help us, you know, during the heat. So we went with one this week. Coach, a lot of new faces on defense. Um, what, what did you see that you liked? And then, and then that second half, like you mentioned, a little offensive explosion from the archers. Um, what, what were some of the things that were giving you problems there? Yeah, you know, I talked about the communication. I thought these guys, particularly in the first half, just communicated really well, timed up our slides. Uh, when we were hedging, we weren't going too quick. And, and then in the second half, like I said, you know, we wore down a, a little bit, uh, gave them some good inside looks that, that made goals easy and, and tough for Morocco to stop. Uh, you know, I think those were the biggest outcomes. And obviously watching the film, you, you know, we'll see the full balance of it. We're open for questions. Hey, Coach, this is Kyle Bennett from the Outside the Box podcast. Uh, you know, Olin Garland today hit that two bomb, uh, you know, coming up from the defense. Is that something you guys would want to potentially utilize more as kind of a weapon to have him, you know, with that pull and, and using, you know, that outer arc to, you know, keep you guys in games, use a little bit of that two-point weaponry uh, more so than you have? Yeah, you know, appreciate that. Uh, that that two-bomb by... By Holden, it, w it was a good look, a, a good read. It, it was almost a, a little bit off speed. I, I think Gittleman uh, misread it a little bit. But anytime you get a pullover and they can get their hands free, we, we give the guys green lights on those. Um, you know, and we feel pretty confident with any guy, a pull, you know, shooting that opportunity. It, it's just being in the right spot and getting their hands free. I think one more question for Coach. Coach, DJ from Outside the Box Podcast. Multiple times this year, you guys have gotten out to great starts. And then the second and third quarters are where you guys kind of slow down and teams take advantage of that time. How do you guys put together uh, and keep it together for the middle quarters so that you can combine your uh, great starts and great finishes to come out with a few more wins? Yeah, you know, great question. And it's something we've talked about these last couple weeks with this team. I continue to say it. it's a great group. Um, they're tough, you know, they're resilient, they believe in each other. 
and uh, you got to learn how to win a little bit, right? You, you get that lead in a couple of these games, and you, you can't fear success, right? You, you got to keep grinding and learn how to win, and that's what we're trying to do as a team right now, obviously, is just how to move forward when we have a lead, not get comfortable, not get complacent, but just keep that gas going to uh, close out a game. So that's obviously the goal and the mission of what we got to do, and I'm already excited about get to, to get back to work with these guys next week. Thanks, Coach. Great. Thank you, man. All right, guys, we have Tom Schreiber, midfielder for the Archers. Tom, can you get, your, can you get some initial thoughts about the game? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's good to get a win. I think we showed a lot of resolve in the second half. Uh, I forget what the score. I think we were down two at halftime. So I think we uh, we battled back. Justin Inacio did an awesome job at the X, and that kind of uh, gave us life all over the place. So good uh, good team win on a hot day off of uh, off of a long break. Hope for questions. Tom Trey Leclaire moving to a D mid role. What's uh, what's that? What element does that bring to the offense? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, if I'm remembering correctly, I think he had one on man up, um, one in transition, you know, because of that switch to, to D mid, and then uh, one because he stayed on the field and had a matchup and, and got a pretty easy look. So um, I think it was, uh, you know, a great move by coach. And I think for Trey, like, he, he embraced that role, right? Like, Trey's a college attackman. I think, you know, he has some records at Ohio State. I don't know exactly what they are, but his. Uh, Willingness to do that, embrace the role, and and play with energy, and um, really thrive in that role. Like it, it really opens up our roster. Um, and to see him um, have such a good day was was awesome for everybody. Hey Tom, it's Kyle Bennett. Um, you know, going into halftime, you guys are down, and then coming out third quarter, you put up a seven piece. What was the uh, what was the message and kind of the energy in the locker room going in, and then and coming? out to you know kind of regroup and, and put that first half behind you yeah I, I I think um it's a mix of a couple things right it's it's like having some urgency and staying confident not panicking but you know needing to execute a little bit better and I think we have a pretty mature group uh our core group especially in the offensive side has been together for quite a while so um keeping everybody poised and keeping everybody confident um, I think if you look back at that first half, we had a couple awesome looks. Um, Morocco was pretty sensational in that first half. Um, I think we hit a couple pipes too. So a lot of our possessions ended in, in great looks for our offense. And I think um, you know sometimes you just gotta kind of tip the cap um, to the goalie and you know just stay confident. And I think we did that. And um, you know our greatest asset offensively in the second half was just number of possessions. And I, that starts with uh, Anasio at the X, and then our, our wing play was real good. Um, the whole game, but in the second half especially, and that just gave us momentum, more opportunities, and you know, thankfully we, we had a pretty hot start in the third quarter, and you know, didn't really look back. We'll, we'll take one more question for Tom. Hey Tom, this is uh, Tommy Birch from Noob Sports. You know, Grant coming back this week gives a lot of versatility to the offense, and I wanted to know uh, what what it's like having that uh, versatility on the field with you. No, it's awesome. I mean, Grant's like as dynamic of a, a player that that there is, and to have his presence down there and to get him back w was huge for us. You know, I think he, you know, he's used to having seven points a game, and you know, he probably, you know, w wants a few back. And but he he's an awesome teammate, and you know, he just he just changes our offense. Like he he's so dynamic, he's so fast, he sees the field so well, he can score. Um, you know, he's just an excellent, excellent player, and. You know, somebody like him is so competitive. You know, to see him go through an injury like that uh, is a bummer. And I know he he worked super hard to come back from it, and we're just thrilled to have him back, and especially down the stretch. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. We have Lyle Thompson, attackman for the Cannons. Lyle, can you give some initial thoughts about the game? Um, I mean, you know, at this point, it's it's do or die. Um, losing this game sort of hurts, but. You, we we can't feel bad for ourselves. We have to we have to move forward, and um, you know um, we we can't bank on on other teams to to save our season. Um, it's do or die from here on out, and and we have to treat the rest of the season like playoffs. Welcome for questions. Lyle, Jonathan Donville recently added. This was your first extended time with him. Seems like you're developing some chemistry. What do you like about his game and, and the way that you two play uh, with each other? No, he's he's got a good stick. Um, you know, he's gonna he's gonna catch passes on inside. So, um, you know, with the box history, I'm I'm comfortable 
feeding the ball to him with with a little bit of pressure on him. So um, it's worked well within our system to to be able to play that two man game on the wing. Um, so you know he's he's coming along and and he played a good game today. Hey, Lyle, it's Kyle Bennett from the Outside the Box podcast. You know, you've been up here a number of times this season talking about how, you know, you trust the system, you trust the guys in the locker room. And as you just said, it's kind of do or die now. What are some of the things that, you know, you take away from this game, you try to piece it together, and like you said, you know, all the way back in Albany, you got to put together that full four quarters. What's something that, you know, you took away from this game that that full four quarters kind of fell off in that second half? Well, it's it's not just this game because when you have consistency losing and consistency not being able to put together uh, four four quarters, it's important for us to to be able to um, show up. We we have to, we have to be able to, you know, you you can't just turn that on um, in the middle of the game. You can't just turn that on mid game. It's it's um, it's hard work. It, it's doing the work during the week when the team isn't together and putting together the right game plan for our our opponent coming into the game and, and at practice on Friday, Saturday. So all those things are really important for preparation, and we have to be able to show up. And, um, you know, I think today our defense, you know, Morocco, he, he, he's seen a lot of rubber, but he stood on his head. He kept us in the game for majority of that game, and I think our defense played well. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're playing that much defense, it's it's tough. So for us, um, you know, not completely satisfied with with our offensive play, we have to be better. And this game, um, you know, we we sort of failed to help help the team out in that aspect. But um, it's preparation. It's it's doing all the work during the week and and um, preparing not just for our system, but for our opponent. Guys, it's Andy Copeland, head coach of the Water Dogs. Coach, give me some initial thoughts on the game. Ah, uh, boy, I, I uh, I'll remember that one for a long, long time. I, I just, uh, you know, two guys went down reasonably early, and you know, Scarps was probably playing at twenty percent, and just a really, uh, really gutsy performance. And uh, it honestly felt very similar to Whips round one, where we had a couple injuries and we were playing two down, and we were able to take that game into overtime. Just weren't able to close it out, and to uh, to be able to you know, kind of have similar circumstances, get into overtime, to have Connor Kelly, who's a you know kind of hometown hero here, be able to score the the goal to get us into overtime, and then ultimately to score the game winner. Like you can't you can't make up just a better script. So. Um, yeah, uh, happy, satisfied. Like that, that would honestly be a giant understatement. This is like, this is just like a championship type uh, win. So really, really happy for our guys. We're open for questions. Coach, we saw Jake Higgins play some offense. Who are some of the guys who stepped up into a different role that you were impressed by? I mean, we asked Higgins and Witcher to both take offensive reps just because we were down to, I think, three three omitties. And you, you guys both know how, how much we ask of Zach Currier. So, you know, he was... Uh, he uh, he had emptied the tank, so we just we just kind of had to, to ask guys to step out of their comfort zones a little bit. And honestly, it's funny Higgins and Witcher both got pretty good shots off. They just kind of ran around and cut hard and kind of set picks for Kieran. And um, you know, tri didn't try to like overcomplicate things, and certainly were able to add value there when we needed them to. So uh, it, it was it was those guys that I would certainly highlight. But uh, you know, Connor Kelly had to move to attack. Uh, you know, Conrad had to take a number of uh, wings. Uh, you know, we kind of moved Sabia down low just to try to kind of go big on big with the Malloy matchup. And we asked Eli to play some LSM, which was something that we hadn't done yet to date. So we uh, we moved some pieces around, and everybody really just stepped up. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know that it was the prettiest of wins, but in terms of uh, kind of answering what this team's DNA is all about and kind of how they're wired, like they are, they are certainly made of the right stuff. And I think that became very, very apparent today. You know, just Kyle Bennett, um, you know, you talked about Connor Kelly being the hometown hero, capping this one off for you guys, but for you, how special was it to come back here at Fairfield and, and get that win the way you guys did? Yeah, look, it was fun. I, I, I spent a lot of time on that same sideline that I was on today, so it was, uh, you know, you kind of had to had to separate the two, but it... Um, Look, I, I I love this university. I love the people here. Some really like meaningful relationships that I'm still very fond of, and a lot of great memories and great experiences. And it was fun to to kind of come back here and uh, 
you know, I think uh, it, it showed what Fairfield University kind of is as an institution, certainly. And then I think in return, I think it was awesome for the PLL. You just look at kind of how the, the youth market and the Fairfield County lacrosse market really came out to support, you know, all eight of these teams between yesterday and today. And in really warm weather days, I think that uh, that certainly tells the story. So it was a lot of fun, a very cool uh, kind of full full circle moment for me. Coach DJ here with Outside the Box podcast. Um, finally getting Jake Withers back in the lineup, uh, going with him this week over Zach Tushi because he had success in the past against Connor Farrell. What was it like having him back? Wiz is the best, and honestly, so is Tucci. We got we got two like real real face off guys, but I mean, you know, Wiz is our guy, and and, and he knows that, and I think Tucci would would kind of say the same thing. Um, you know, I, it, it's more so kind of a chemistry thing between uh, Wiz and Courier and Reese, so we wanted to try to go ahead and maintain that. And uh, I don't know exactly what the percentages were. I mean, Farrell's, Farrell's at a whole different level this year, too, so I give him an awful lot of credit. But uh, I love everything about uh, Withers just as a competitor and an athlete and a ground ball guy and what he can do in some of the picking situations. And, you know, in the indoor league, he plays a lot of defense and transition, so he, uh, he, he's, he can do it all. And... Uh, it was nice to have him back, just like getting his personality back and, and, and Dylan Ward's personality back. Uh, those were a couple of kind of big alpha personalities that we were missing early on. And, uh, you know, th those guys, I think both of them have gold medals and, you know, I certainly don't. So they've, you know, th they've, they've done it at the highest level and uh, no moment is too big for either of those guys. And I think you saw that today. Hey coach, Dan Kaplan from Inside the Cross. Um, I guess my, my question is, uh, you've mentioned both the physical toll and kind of the emotional high from here, from this game. What's the recipe to kind of flip the script and be ready to roll for next week now? Uh, give the guys a couple of days to get healthy and do some PT. And, you know, we got to obviously do a little bit of a status check on, on Sowers and Brownie and Scarps. So we'll have, you know, kind of some decisions to make. We're, we're hopeful that both DiNapoli and Schlosser uh, we'll be able to be activated next week, uh, so we'll have some decisions to make there. But um, look, I, I, I think it's a pretty cool narrative that we started the season 0-3 and, and we lost to the Whips, the Chrome, and the Cannons, and we were able to flip it against the Whips and now today the Chrome, and we play the Cannons uh, next week. So I think that will probably be the message. Uh, but uh, above all else, I, I just think we are trending in the right direction. And, you know, in a 10-game regular season, uh, you know, with a bye week and an all-star break and then a bye week at the end, I think that is the, that's the storyline. You just want to feel like week over week you're continuing to get better. And I, I really, in my heart of hearts, I feel like that's been the case with us. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks everybody. All right, guys. We have Connor Kelly, the man of the hour. Connor, what are your initial thoughts on the game? Uh, pretty electric. Honestly, the crowd was amazing. Uh, hot, very hot. Um, I, it was just a swing of things. I think we were saying on the on the sidelines, a game of runs, uh, like anything. So they had their runs, we had ours, and you got to keep digging deep. I mean, we were down two guys. It's tough with 19 guys. You go down to 17. It's very tough in this league, but dig deep. Hey, Connor, this is uh, Tommy Birch with New Sports, and, you know, I got to ask it, you know, came Connecticut, made that, that last second goal to take you guys to overtime. Can you just walk me through the play? Uh, yeah, I think it's a lucky bounce being on my home turf here. Uh, I grew up playing on that field, so I think I got a little bit of a lucky bounce. Um, found a hole, took a shot, got the rebound, and uh, just tried to fire something at the net. Scannone was playing well tonight, so I uh, had to get something by him at, at least once. Hey, Connor, it's Kyle Bennett from the Outside the Box podcast. You know, you talked about losing two guys in this game earlier in the season against the Winstakes. You guys were down two. Can you just talk to me about, you know, the, the ability for this team to kind of scrap together next man up mentality where, you know, you lose guys, but you still hang in the game and today it paid off and you, and you come away with that overtime win. But what is it about that next man up mentality for this water dog team that you guys just don't quit? Exactly. I think uh, Coach alluded to it in the beginning of the game. He's like, uh, the Chrome is similar in identity-wise as like, uh, we're going to fight and it's not going to be pretty. Uh, a lot of the times we don't rely on one guy to do it all for us. And with that, one guy goes down, another guy fills the spot. So it's kind of next man up mentality. Uh, but we went down to 6-0 guys at one point and uh, you saw it between the lines. It was tough. 
Uh, you got to play smart ball. Uh, I think the first half we played a little bit different. In the second half, we slowed it down. Uh, tried to work at X uh, through Kieran. He's been playing great uh, this year, and he's one of our leaders. So worked it through him. Um, it's great to get a dub. We'll take one more question. Connor DJ here from Outside the Box Podcast. Was it the plan for you to get the ball at the end in overtime, or was that kind of just the flow of the game and you just took it? Like, kind of just walk us through the end. Uh, yeah, definitely not the plan. I think we got it off a – what happened was we had the ball kind of uh, – D. Ward made a huge save, come back down, Zach – uh, kind of a little a turnover, ends up getting it back um, and then brings it down, kind of unsettled, settled. we get a shot. And normally off the end line, uh, I'm going to try to attack, and we had Higgy uh, setting a nice pick. I came clean off of it, and uh, you got to put the ball in the back of the net at that point. Thanks, Connor. Thank you. All right, guys, we have Brendan Nickter and uh, attacking for the Chrome. Brendan, can we get some initial thoughts of the game? Yeah, I think uh, one thing that there's, there's never a doubt of is the heart that we show. And, you know, we're always playing for each other, the tough ground balls. And, uh, like, that's never a doubt, especially after a loss. But the biggest thing is our coaching staff said it right away is just we played really dumb, a lot of little mistakes that are not going to make you go all the way to win a championship and especially just to win a game like this. So I think that's the biggest takeaway just initially. We're open for questions. Yeah, Brennan, uh, Logan was not out of the lineup today. Jackson Morrill down on attack. How does having Jackson down there in Logan's spot, three righties on attack, change the way that you guys approach offense? Yeah, I think it just involved a little more communication um, with Jackson. It allows us to kind of, me and him, rotate between X. Uh, obviously, Logan likes to stick in that left side. So, uh, see, Logan brings so much to the team. We were missing that. But Jackson played incredible today and stepped up. And uh, our offense has flown really well, even without Logan today. Hey, Brennan, it's Kyle Bennett from the Outside the Box podcast. Next week, you guys get a list of a team that's been rolling, you know, pretty much all season. You know, what do you take away from an overtime game like this where you guys were kind of clawing throughout the entire game? What positives do you kind of try to take away from this to kind of regroup and get ready for a team like the Whipsnakes? Yeah, I think to be at a team like the Whipsnakes is uh... – you got to be very mature with the ball, and the little mistakes are to come back to beat you. You kind of have to play a complete game. And, uh, you know, I think our defense played incredible today. Uh, Sconzi, as per usual, was playing lights out. So uh, I think just we just learned that we had to play a complete game, which we've been saying all season. It seems like every week we were just kind of, uh, kind of one-sided, whether offensively or defensively. And to beat the Whip Snakes, you got to do both. So I think that's the biggest thing that we learned going into next week. I'll take one more question. Uh, Brennan, DJ here from Outside the Box Podcast. First time we saw John Rannigan in the lineup this year. What was it like playing with him? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest thing with Ranny is uh, no matter where he is, whether he's traveling, uh, you know, in the reserve spot or uh, just in the 25, man, he's, he's always a leader. He's one of the best I've ever been around. Uh, I, it's pretty funny how they perfected the bad cop, good cop with Mackie and Ranny. Uh, Manny, uh, Ranny's definitely the good cop. And uh, he's just a great personality to have in the, in the locker room. And, you know, I feel like he's always saying the right thing. So uh, he's a big asset to this team, and uh, he's just incredible to be around. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, guys, we have Sean Scannone, goalie for the Chrome. Sean, can you get some initial thoughts of the game? Yeah, uh, could have won either way there. I mean, tough one at the end. Uh, one goal game. You know, every team is a good team in this league. And it's one possession here, one possession there that can just alter the game. But uh, I thought our guys played great, played hard. It was hot out there, but uh, you know, I'm proud of the guys here. We'll bounce back next week. Questions? Yeah, Sean. Uh, Water Dogs coming into the game. Uh, I'm sure you guys had your scout ready. They change up so many offensive guys due to injury. How do you approach that offense with so many new faces and down in the fourth quarter in overtime? Yeah, I mean, they're a great team, but new faces in and out. Uh, we try to stick to what we do. You know, try not to let their uh, play dictate the game, but let our defensive play dictate the game. And uh, like I said, everyone's good in this league, and we said to stick to what we do. And, you know, I got an unlucky bounce there when they took a shot late in the fourth, went their way, and then they scored and then capitalized in overtime. Sean, it's Kyle Bennett from the Outside the Box podcast. You know, Brendan just talked about how the defense, you know, played incredible in front of you today. You saved 60% of your shots. You know, 
playing against the Whip Snakes team next week, what are some things that you guys have to kind of put together to play that full, you know, four quarter game? That way you can kind of, you know, hopefully come away with a win and, and trying to shed this, uh, this two game losing streak. Yeah, I mean, you know, Whip Snakes are a great team. Uh, like we'll look at the film this week, we'll meet as a team and go over what we did wrong, but we'll also move forward and look at the, what the Whips do. Um, they're very balanced little players. They have great goaltending and Kyle Burnlore and, um, you know, great offensive guys, obviously, Matt Rambo and Zed Williams. Those guys are a good dynamic together, but I feel like these guys are, you know, on the defensive end are established now for the Chrome, and uh, you know, I think we'll be okay and be ready to go. Take one more question. John, DJ here from Outside the Box Podcast. Uh, first time playing professionally again in Connecticut since leaving the Hammerheads. What was it like being back here? And, uh, how much? I assume it was a lot of fun, so just talk about you know playing back here in Connecticut. Yeah, I mean, uh, playing for the Hammerheads was a great experience, but we were in the bubble. I uh, saw a couple of light blue Hammerheads jerseys walking around out there, but uh, it's a cool experience. I played here in college. Uh, Fairfield was in the conference when I was playing at UMass. So a great venue, unbelievable crowd here. It was a great crowd last night, and, uh, you know, Connecticut always shows out. So it was, it was a blast, and uh, I'm looking forward to next week to be back in Dallas. Thanks, Thanks guys. All right, guys, we've been suited in. Uh, head coach of the Chrome. Uh, coach, can you some initial thoughts of the game? Well, I think it's uh, it's it it was a c c kind of a cumulative effect of bad decisions and you know non-execution over the the course of the 48 minutes that that actually buried us. Um, the goal we gave up right before half, like we just went too early on on, on the pass, and you know a couple little things like that. But just you know the effort was there. You know, and we knew that they were down a couple guys, and we were trying to press and press. But sometimes when you press, you you make mistakes, and I think we would just made way too many mistakes. Um, but we talked about support, you know th this has got to be a learning experience for us. I think we're a team that is in a good position to be in the postseason and do well. Um, but the big thing is we support each other when we make mistakes and we learn from it. So those are my thoughts. <laughs> we're open for questions. Hey, hey coach, this is uh, Tommy Bray oh, with Neutral Sports. Oh, my bad. Hi, no, this, is, uh, this is Tommy with uh, Noob Sports. And, you know, a uh, couple, you know, on and off quarters you guys had, but overall, you know, defense was playing well tonight. And Skinani was having a good game. What's it like having somebody like him in the net? Well, he's a UMass guy, so, you, you know, you got to give him the nod because I went to UMass back in the in – late 80s, I guess, but um, yeah, he, he's great. And, uh, you know, as the game went on, he got better and better and better. And, you know, um, the game tying goal was super unfortunate. I mean, he made a great save. You know, we were kind of all over the ball and then it just, then it was a scrum and the ball just popped in a guy's stick and he slipped through two guys and scored. Um, but, um, you know, I think I think having him in the cage is, you know, he's got the quickest hands in the game, in my opinion. And um, and he's a big body. And he gets hit by a lot of shots. And he plays great position. And he's a great uh, communicator. Um, you can hear him from the sideline. He does a great job. So he directs traffic well. Um, you know, really, really happy that uh, he's our goalie right now. So um, love him. He's got a, you know, he weighs – you know, this game weighed pretty heavy on him right afterwards, and, you know, rightfully so. That's that's how goalies are, but, you know, it's certainly not his fault. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a default of everybody, you know. So, um, yeah, I love him. Love him. We'll take one more question for Coach. Coach DJ here from Outside the Box Podcast. This, seemed, this game seemed like it was one in between the arcs. Um, in between, you know, quick transition shots, uh, turnovers at, uh, and failed clears, face-offs. How do you guys clean up that area and, and uh, continue to win these one-goal games? Because I believe this is, you know, only the first or second time this season you guys have lost a one-goal game because of those kind of errors. So how do you continue to keep uh, in between the arcs one of the best areas you guys are uh, have as a team? Yeah, I think this team in general does a really good job in between the lines. I think we struggled with that in the first. We had a hard time clearing the ball in our first matchup with those guys. And honestly, I think we were lucky to beat them the first time around. We just we just got hot at the end. Um, you know, the whole second half, I didn't feel like we ever got hot. And, you know, it was, you know, it was, um, 
you know, it was close in the second half. I don't even know how many goals were scored in the second half total. But, um, yeah, I think those so, – some of the mistakes that were made were guys that were fatigued, I think, um, just making the wrong decision, not throwing the ball early enough. Um, so it's just discussions. And, you know, I think one of the things that we talked about kind of at the break at the end is, like, we, we need to just make sure we're learning from the mistakes we make. All right? If we're going to be in a situation to be in a championship this year, we have to learn from mistakes, and it has to show the next time. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, it, sometimes we feel like we have really high IQ, but sometimes we don't look like we play with a high IQ. But I think we're a group of really high IQ guys. But as soon as you get tired, that's the first thing that goes. So I think it, it was just bad decision making and, and uh, we can clean that up just through uh, video clips during the week and whatnot. So, thanks, TJ. All right, guys. Dylan Ward, goalie for the Water Dogs. Dylan, can you get some initial thoughts on the game? Uh, it was hot. Um, you know, it was a grind for us, especially. At, you know, we were we were down two offensive players for a good chunk of that second half, and you know, we were we were losing some guys uh, as that game went on. So I think it was just you know it was a gutsy win from from our end and. Um, you know, one that we're, we're, we're going to be able to look back from at the end of the season, I think, and, and, and look at that as kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say a turning point, but like a defining point of what we're going to be as a team moving forward of just like a gutsy, hardworking, no bullshit, no ma not, not making excuses kind of team. Hey, Dylan, this is uh, Dan from Inside the Cross. Uh, quick question here. You, you mentioned that obviously it was really gutsy. Do you feel like that's more uh, coach-driven or player-driven from the Water Dogs, that grit and grind? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, obviously, Cope was, was um, you know, really rallying us together. And then, you know, each other as a, as, as a team and as teammates, you know, we really wanted to work hard for that guy beside us, as cliche and as corny as that may sound. But in a situation like that where it's, you know, it's a Sunday afternoon, it's really hot out, we're losing guys on already smaller rosters. Um, it's just a, it's, it's, it's a really awesome way to win. And so it's an awesome way to, you know, to, to, to have something to celebrate after that game, the way, the way that we were able to win that. What did you guys change? Obviously, personnel-wise, like Jake Higgins, some others were taking offensive shifts, but like as a team, whether it was like as a defense or just a complete unit, like what were the points of emphasis to survive that period with the like 17, yeah, 16 it, guys? Yeah, it was just uh, it was a lot of just you know do do what's asked of you. You know, like if you needed to take a shift of offense, you had to take a shift of offense. If you had to play offense and then defense and then back to offense, you know, that was just, you know, the the kinds of things that we needed to, to win that game. And, and guys were, were fine with it. You know, no one complained. Um, we just went out there and, and did as what, what was asked of us. And, and um, you know, we're able to find a way. What's up, Dylan? This is uh, Tommy with Nuke Sports. And, um, you know, the defense today, physical all day, kept it all the way through the heat, you know, causing 12 turnovers. How do you feel about the guys today? Awesome. Awesome. You know, we talked about it uh, a lot last night and not wanting to to create opportunities for, for their offense because, you know, we know they have a lot of guys that can fill the back of the net. And I think we did a great job of making their team earn slides um, and, and causing some havoc. And when the ball was on the ground, we were able to go the other way. So, you know, the defense in front of me played awesome. Um, you know, we obviously, I think we need to clean up the transition game a little bit, um, both ways, but overall, you know, defense was, they were great today. I got one more, uh, overtime, obviously no timeouts in overtime. Is there a better player to have on your team in that situation than Zach Courier? I mean, if you could hold on to a stick, but, uh, no, he's, uh, he's the man. He, he can do everything on the field and he played of, you know, 24 minutes in that second half. He, I wouldn't be surprised if he played 20, 20 plus, like he just, he does everything and he does everything at a very, very high level. He's, he's the, I think they have the best all around the cross player on the planet right now. Thanks. Tom. Absolutely. Thanks guys.